Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Small World unboxing. This is for Power Pack number one, which combines the two separate expansions of Being Not Afraid and Spider's Web. Um, there's a possibility you could have bought one or one of these separately. Um, they do sell them individually. Um, I don't know if they still currently do. They may have discontinued it once this box came out. Um, but it is possible to get these as two separate sets. So just be cautious if you're looking to pick up expansions that you watch. They do have a power pack number one and a power pack number two, which has some other different sets in it as well. So just be cautious. You'll end up buying the same set twice. Um, so what are the expansions going to add? They're going to add new races um, and new powers. Um, that's pretty much what these ones do while they got packaged together. There are some other... Um, miniature expansions as well that add um, some other different game components and things like that. Um, but these ones are just going to add more, more, more. Um, so how they come packaged in here. Um, so I'm going to first just show up what kind of how it's packaged. Then I will actually will go through each one as an expansion by itself. So you're going to get one big sheet here. Um, just saying whatever down there, which is kind of interesting because in the base game, you got like one for every player, and then now you're only getting one total. Um, so I guess they just realized they didn't need to have to hang out one to every single person. You could pass this around the table. So they will have these showing off with the skulls being uh, the Being Not Afraid characters and the little spider webs being ones from a spider's web. So you can see how they're broke down, their abilities. Um, and on the back side will be the power breakdown and the same idea. Then you will get your tray, which will have all your token sheets. You can see I've not punched out yet. Um, but they're all just mixed together. They just combine the two expansions into one set. Uh, there is no way, uh, per looking at these, to tell, like just by the tokens, to tell what expansion goes where. Um, I do love the fact, though, that they come with this extra tray here. Um, so hold all your different races, hold all your different banners and your tokens and all that stuff. Because um, that really looks nice with the base game. Um, I think what I'll do is probably, after I've done the expansions, I will kind of show off how they all work. See, see, see if they can all fit into one box together or not. Um, Alright, so I'm going to pause for a moment and we're going to separate these tiles out. Alright, so we got all the tokens popped out. So I put all the uh, uh, race tokens in their little slots here. Now, unlike the base game, they don't show in where it says. In the base game, it says you're like, literally like, put these here, these here, these here. Because there's some that are more than those. They don't do that, but there are two different sizes. This is one that's a little bit thicker than the other. So I could probably actually, you know, swap. Whoops, and I just spilled all of those everywhere. I could probably swap these two around. Just so they're a little bit closer. But I do like the fact that even in all these trays, they give room to like, I can get my finger in there to pull all of these out. Um, but they're not so empty where they're going to tip over. And like this one maybe. So I might, I don't know if that one you can swap out for a different one if it's going to make a difference. Um, but yeah, not too much where they're going to fall over and you're going to have to try it. Because this one, it could be. It could tip over like that, but it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, so it's actually really nice that they have this extra little tray. And then they have spots for your, um, your races and your special powers can slide in those. They have a little spot here for extra, like, coins and then just the extra tokens, which will drop all those in after we're done sorting them out. So, alright, we're going to look at the Being Out Afraid expansion. Now, again, like I said... Uh, before, they don't have any extra rules for this. There's nothing explains um, anything else about this set or any of that any of that type of thing, like what this is, what it's for. Um, look at the back of the box. I just realized that pictures on the back here. So yeah, the back is going to just show that it's adding these other ones to the original Being Out Afraid set. Uh, five new races, five new powers, along with a special tray. Um, and then this one is Spider's Web mini expansion featuring um, entries from our Kickstarter uh, spidering backers. Um, so a couple other different characters that were originally from a Kickstarter campaign. So it's kind of cool too. So just two extra ways to get 
these characters, um, which is really fun. So, yeah. So that's, so that's just the two different facts. Like nothing else to explain them outside the rules. So we're going to just look at one at a time. So let's look at the Be Not Afraid characters. Zoom in up on these. So we're going to start off with the Witch Doctors. Um, and just a reminder, in case you haven't watched the first video for a while, the bottom corner here is going to show how many of this particular race you get, which is then added to the amount from the uh, other orange corner from whatever their power is. The little symbol there will show what their, just kind of like a defining thing of what they are. And then that will match their token. So if the picture doesn't, you can always match that symbol very quickly. Of course, all the tokens here will have a regular sign and then a decline side with like faded arc and that column in there showing that they're in decline, which means you're not using them. Um... And then they'll have kind of the little picture. It gives a, a brief example, which, you know, if you first time playing, you're probably going to have to keep re referring to the book. Uh, but if you've played it a few times, and you can mix and match them in your sets. You will be able to just kind of look at these and be like, oh, okay, I get what that means. Uh, so it says, each time you lose a Witch Doctor token, so every time one of your tokens are KO'd, so you can cross out, roll a reinforcement guide and receive as many new Witch Doctors from storage tray as you rolled, Pips on the guy, up to the number of Witch Doctors left. Deploy them on the board at the end of the current player's turn. So that's kind of cool. So every time you lose a character, you can roll a die. You could get anywhere from one to three extra ones instead. Um, yeah, so it's not definitely not a bad ability to have. Um, of course, then they can go into decline, and they lose their abilities. Up next, we have the Pixies. Um, the Pixies will says during your troop redeployment, leave only a single Pixie token on each region they occupy. All your other Pixies must be kept off the board until the start of your next turn. Um, uh, so this is a little bit different. You get a lot of characters and they have the little butterfly symbol. Um, so the only other one that has this as even anywhere near this many was Ratman, I believe. Um, at least at the time from the base game. Uh, but the Ratman didn't have any special abilities. Now the Pixies do... But they're, um, you don't get to have a bunch of extra appointments. You basically, it's spread them way out because at the end of your turn, you have to pick up all but one. Um, and you don't get to play them out, so you can't have, so they can be spread very thin across the board, but you're not going to have mounting defense. It's kind of show, show that they're small. They can conquer a little area, like in Swarm, but they're not going to all hang out in one big giant group. So it's kind of a neat little ability. There's their decline side. We have Leprechauns. Um, the Leprechaun say, During redeployment, place one pot of gold in any or all, if you wish, of the regions your Leprechauns occupy. Each pot of gold still represents, still, rep, still present at the start of your next turn, goes to your victory staff as is worth one coin. If one of your opponents conquers one of these regions before your next turn, he gets a pot of gold instead. Any remaining pot of gold tokens can to be used during subsequent redeployment phases. So, we are going to get a pile of 16 uh, pot of gold cards or tokens. On the back side, they will have one uh, thing. And that way, they're the same size as all the rest of the coins. That way you can just stack them with all the rest of them. So every time you deploy them, uh, during redeployment when you deploy all your characters back down, you get add these down there as long as you can take control of the area, you can get these. Now you might, you know, so it's the, it's the gameplay of, do you drop, you know, one here, one here, one here, or do you only drop one at a time? But again, you only have 10 rounds. So you don't, and you're probably going to go into decline at some point with this race, if it's your first race. So they assume if you go into decline by turn five, you don't want to. You probably want to drop these as many as possible to gain them, but you also don't want to do it to the point where you're giving away to your opponents. So it's an interesting back and forth on how you have to play it. Of course, they have the pot of gold symbol. Um, yes, yeah, so it could definitely be an interesting race. We have the homunculi, uh, which are these little like gobliny looking creatures inside a glass bottle um kind of represented by i'm not even sure what that's supposed to represent it's supposed to be like the little creature is inside 
um, homunculus usually created beings. So each time a homunculi, the homunculi race, combo is bypassed, in addition to a victory coin, you must also add a homunculus token taken from a storage tray if any left. Ooh, so that's kind of neat. So every time someone doesn't take one, um, they get, the next player will get an additional troops. So you start with five, so if it gets skipped over a few times, it could easily end up some extra. Um, these tokens are added normally. Received when the homunculus combo is finally picked up on any victory coins. So that's kind of a neat little idea. So if people keep bypassing them, they just grow in size, they grow in size, and you get more um, to constantly use. But then they don't have any in-game ability after that. Um, so that's kind of interesting because then, like, again, like, if the Pixies have 11 or the Ratman, I think, had 10, I believe, 10 or 11, like, these guys start with 5. So it's going to take a while for them to build up. But that's also a somewhat gamble on... Uh, you and other players, you might not take them on the first turn just for the fact they have no abilities, but then you gotta wonder how many times do you skip it or you let your opponent skip it. Well, if I skip it, um, now it has two coins on it and has seven. Do I take it on my next, after I decline and I pick my next combo, or do I skip it and maybe somebody else gets it? Or, um, yeah, that's, it's very interesting because you can become very powerful and get skipped too many times. Uh, especially late in the game. Also, now he's popping out like nine, you know. And then finally, we have the barbarians. Uh, your barbarians cannot redeploy their troops at the end of each turn. If your final conquest attempt fails, keep the unused barbarians off the board until the start of your next turn. Um, interesting. So, barbarians cannot redeploy. So, wherever they are, if you have. You know, three of them in a stack, they have to stay in that stack. You can't spread them out. Uh, so they're basically conquering hordes. They're going to keep moving as big groups instead of re-separating back out every turn. Uh, which is, makes it harder for you maybe to take over more areas. Because you can't spread out and get more points every time. But it's also going to keep you from um, losing anything else. Now, one interesting thing to note about this so far is... So, in Small World, there are actually, um, there's some different expansions that add, big map expansions that add different areas, but there's also two big base games. There's the regular one, and then there's Underground, which Underground has, um, a completely different map layout. So, there's some of the characters that won't work mix and match, because they'll say, like, um, like in the base game, some, like the... Humans need planes to gain bonuses. One character uses hills. You're playing in the underground. It's the exact opposite. There's certain characters gain bonus for certain areas here. All of these characters are combinable with any version. Because they're not reliant upon those different locations. Which is really cool. Alright, now let's look at our special powers. We have Barricade. Uh, Barricade says, collect three bonus coins each time your Barricade troops occupy four regions... Or less at the end of your turn. Um, so as long as you control less than four areas, you gain three extra turns. So this this uh, benefits you to not spread your troops out, keeping them all built up, making them harder to take out. You'll gain more, but it also means that if you're doing that, you're not spreading your troops out more. And if you go into decline, it drops back down. Now this would be great, obviously, to like barbarians who can't redeploy. So you're always going to have big groups. Alright, up next we have the Catapult. Uh, once per turn you may place the Catapult in a region you occupy to conquer any region. There's one region away, but not adjacent, so you can skip a spot at one less token than usual. Catapult may be used to attack a region beyond the lake, but not overseas. Um, the reason the Catapult is immune to enemy conquests... As well as their race and special powers, the catapult disappears when you're going to decline. So you'll get a special catapult token, um, which basically is saying you can use that to conquer areas farther away. Um, so that's pretty cool. We have corrupt. We can corrupt somebody. Day one bonus coin from any opponent each time they successfully conquer one of your active regions. 
So someone takes over your area, you gain an extra coin. It's pretty cool. Alright, then we have Mercenary. Each time you conquer a region, you may spend one victory coin to reduce the number of tokens you need to conquer it by two. Um, a minimum number of one token is still required. If you use a mercenary during your final conquest attempt, you may, you may decide to do so after you roll uh, for your reinforcement dice. Um, so that's exactly cool. You can pay one to make it a little bit easier. To pay. It's essentially it's saying like, you're paying to buy two extra characters to come help you conquer, conquer an area. You're paying one to add two mercenaries to your group. So that's pretty fun. That's all of these have four. Interesting. Uh, and then finally we have Imperial. For each region in excess of three, which your Imperial troops occupy at the end of your turn, collect one bonus coin. If they occupy five regions at the turn's end, you receive two bonus co coins. So if you control uh, four areas, you get one extra point. If you control five, you get two. So this is the opposite of the barricade, where the barricade, if you have less than four, you gain extra for keeping small, tight, tight location, but fortify really heavily. Versus Imperial, you're going to gain more coins for spreading your army out. Um, all right, so that was the Be Not Afraid set. Um, yeah, very... Um, Again, probably the, fir the first expansion, so it's very, um, I don't want to say generic abilities. Um, very good different abilities, but nothing reliant upon specifics of the map or any of that stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, also not very complicated abilities either, which is very fun, because um, sometimes complicated expansions, they try and add way too much or way too much difficulty, and it kind of turns you off. Speaking of that, we're going to look at a spider's web, um, which adds some more <laughs> difficult characters. So now these look like they were created by, what's it say here, um, specific back backers, um, Alex Kappel, or sorry, Andrew Kappel, Alex and Bill Gertzky, and Randall Pitchford. So it looks like they created three new races, and we have three new abilities. And so these guys look like they're going to be a little bit more complicated. We have ice switches, which have an ice cream cone. And they're made of ice cream. So we have a little bit better picture here. Uh, cone skirt. Uh, cone bra. There's like a mint one in the back. It's kind of interesting. Um, so what do... What do these guys do? So this is one, this is one designed by Andrew Kappel. Um, so it says, Ice Switch collect one Winker Marker for each magic source they control. So for each time you're on magic source, now we're utilizing spots on the board. Um, and you get a... Um, you get a Winker Marker to redeploy at the end phase. Um... At the end of the Rita planet phase, Ice Switches may place their Winter Markers in their own regions or any adjacent region. There cannot be more than one Winter Marker per region, though. Winter Marker permanently augments the region's defense by one. It remains on the board as long as Ice Switches are active. Uh, regions with Winter Marker are not controlled by an Ice Switch earn one less victory coin than usual. Cool. So you're going to get these little, like, Ice Winter Markers, your little snow globes. Um... And then what you do is, at the end of your, every time you have a magic thing, you, get, you gain one of these. Then you can place them down as long as you're on them. You gain an extra defense. Um, and in anywhere that you don't control them, they still add to one extra defense or conquer point. But they also earn one at minus one coin. So basically, you could bolster your areas to help keep you defensive. Or you could throw it on opponents, although it does give them extra defense to make it harder to take over. They gain one less coin. So if this landed in an area where they have um, enemies or uh, characters in the decline, then um, their decline would basically be sitting there useless. Um, all right, and then she doesn't have anything special on the back. Let's look at the Sling Men. The Sling Men were designed by Bill Gertzky. I think I have a box that mentioned two of them. Alex and Bill on the box. The little 
sheet here only mentions Bill. Oh, because one designed... Um, one designed a power card as well. So I have a Slingman here. I don't never heard of this race before. They look like little gnomes almost. Um, so Slingman may conquer regions that is one region away from which they currently occupy, provided they do not control a region adjacent to it. So they kind of work like the catapult. Uh, a region is conquered this way. Uh, it immediately takes one victory coin from the stash. They may conquer regions beyond the lake, but not overseas. So essentially, they can just shoot themselves to conquer brand new areas that aren't that they aren't next to, uh, and they gain extra coin every time they do so. Um, so that's kind of cool. They can advance across the board a lot farther, spread their army out. Um, but I'm assuming you can also conquer them like normal if you would like. All right, and then there's their backs, and then our. Th Third race, our final one, are the Stags. Or Stags. So it does say on here, um, the Stags and Soul Touch, which are one of the special abilities, are from Borderlands and Borderlands 2. Um, so that's kind of cool that we have something, a uh, character from a video game added in there. So I'm assuming that's the Borderlands symbol there. It says, randomly select and place one loot marker face down in each region you conquer. You may look at it only after you've selected it and placed it on the board. Uh, when a opponent conquers one of your regions, reveal the loot marker. If the loot marker is a SCOG attack marker, the conquest is canceled and the opponent loses one token. Cannot retry any attacks against his region during this turn. Otherwise, the opponent collects the loot. If you abandon a region, leave the loot token behind. When you go into decline or at the end of your last turn, if you didn't go into decline, reveal all loot tokens in your regions and collect them. Cool. So you're going to get a bunch of these loot tokens. You're going to place them down every time you conquer an area. Then once you've placed them randomly, you can look at them so you know what they are. So you have an idea of whether you should really protect it or if you could abandon it. It says, if you abandon a region, you leave the token behind. But it says when you go into decline or at the end of your turn, uh... If you didn't go into decline, uh, in your last turn, if you didn't go into decline, reveal all loot tokens in your regions and collect them. So basically, when you get rid of this race or at the end of the game, you get to collect any tokens that you control. Basically, how that works. Um, so you look at some of these tokens. Then. So here they're going to be on the on the back. He doesn't have anything special. But we have a little treasure chest. Uh, so on the back, they're going to show a possible scrag attack. Kind of neat. You could get one that has three coins. We have a zero coin. We have a two coin. So it looks like we have two of the twos. We have two of the zeros, one three, we have two ones, and then we have three scrag attacks. So again, you kind of decide, like, do you want to leave that one alone? Hey, as a scrag in there, you can leave it. If it has one, it might, one or zero, it might not be worth you defending, but the two or threes you might defend. So that's kind of a neat little, little uh, mechanic of the game. Alright, then we have some special abilities. We're going to start with Lava. At the end of your turn, this one's done by Alex Gertie, the same guy that did the Sling Men. Not the same guy. Um, I'm guessing they, they're probably brothers. Um, this is at the end of your turn for each mountain region you occupy. You may place one Lava token in any region adjacent to that mountain region, including regions protected by special races and powers. All tokens in this region are taken in hand by the defeated player and treated as if the region were conquered, except there's no loss of tokens. The region may not be entered by another player until after the beginning of your next turn. Uh, at the beginning of your next turn, remove all lava tokens from the board and proceed as usual. So we have four lava tokens. Um... And then, yeah, so how they do is at the end of your turn, you get to put these down, um, 
next to your mountains as long as you control them and they basically take over that area um yeah, pretty cool uh just additional way for you to take over stuff um we have copycat this one is uh also designed by andrew capel who designed the ice cream witches the ice witches uh at the beginning of each of your turns you may place the copycat marker on one of the six powers from the combo listed next to the board at Active race benefits from this power's effect until the beginning of your next turn, or until opponent chooses it as this combo. When the power's effect stops, you lose all those special power tokens. Note, some some special powers may only apply on given turn. For instance, wealth only works on your first turn. Stout only works if you go into decline. So you'll get this mirror, the little double-sided mirror. You put it on one of the other ability rates. Uh, Sorry, special abilities that are on the, um, in the, like, store or whatever, the market. And, you know, you get that ability until someone buys it, um, and it goes away. Uh, but yeah, some of them are going to be better than others. Some might actively hurt you if you lose them later on. Um, but that's a kind of neat little idea. And then our final token here for the game is going to be Soul Touch. Uh, this one's also from Borderlands. Uh, this is designed by Randy Pitchford. Uh, when your Soul Touch race goes into decline, it automatically revives your in, de your in decline race. In uh, instead of picking a new race on your next turn, you activate your previous in decline race. You may keep these tokens. You may keep the tokens. That in decline race already had on the board, flipping them back to their active side or take them back to your hand if you like. Uh, you get the rest if any of the race tokens, any markers if any, and you receive this as a new combo immediately played on your next turn. Okay, so basically, if you go into decline, um, you can basically just then re flip your character card back over and reuse it. And someone might be like, isn't the point of the decline? I already have a couple of, like, I have, like, five tokens on the board. I'm going to leave them. Yes, but if you normally would have had ten tokens, but you've lost five of them due to being conquered, um, and because every time you conquer, you have to discard one of your tokens and the rest go back to your hand. Now you could, instead of just settling with saying, hey, I have five tokens out and I'm just going to leave that start a new race, you can opt to choose this race again um and then now you get all them tokens back and now you have all your five extra ones you can redeploy which maybe you'll be deploying like a turn or two and then decline the next turn oh so, kind of interesting uh just a quick resurrection ability all right so then the only other tokens we have we didn't show off they give us four more of the uh, five cost ones i think just to help out with so many extra characters um, but that is what we would have for our thing. Um, I will do a quick add on at the end of this video just to show it to see how the, the two different small expansions maybe fit in the same box with the big one. Otherwise, yeah, that's Small World, uh, Power Pack Volume 1. Uh, so you're going for some extra new races and powers. So this is definitely a fun way to get just some extra cool content. Um, all right, there we go. See you guys in the next video. Alright, so the quick add-on here, just wanted to show off if you have uh, both power packs set 1 and 2, which are the first 5, like, racing class expansions, you know, all combined into 1. They came with each one of these extra, extra little trays, which has all your different stuff, so power pack 1, power pack 2. Um, they will fit, like, this into a separate box. Now, again, this is why I said I love if they made a third set. Because um, it looks like they made enough room that you should be able to fit a third winner. Now, would have been nice to fit them all into the box themselves. Although the big box, the big tokens, all have... Or the, the tokens all have a little clear case as a tile. The rest of the stuff doesn't. Now, um, if they made another little tiny tray like this that had room for these guys. Because like... So if we look at this, we have a race in that. They made another one that has that. Just some extra, like, replaced even these, which is some long ones for the rest of your tokens. You probably could get all of this stuff. Let's see if I pick one of these up. 
um, roughly into the same spot. Now, obviously, it looks like it's a little bit more room because uh, of all the extra gold coins and everything. But I'm sure you could probably adjust something. And then they almost could have made it so you could have fit all of these into one extra box. But, yo, know, there's that. Um, so basically you're gonna have to have two separate boxes. Although if you do get extra expansions, uh, little things, even if they don't have these straight get the other extra ones. There's a little bit of room left in here to dump some extra, uh, tiles and stuff. Because I don't think any of the other small expansions have more races or classes. I think they're all, like, extra different components or maps and stuff like that. Um, and then if you get one of the... Other bigger box sets that add more races, they're going to be a big box. I, I'm not sure how those fit. If I get more of them and there's different solutions, I, I will do that. Um, with that all even being said, just to throw under the end of this video, um, is I will be doing a follow-up video. They do have, I have bought some special trade tokens for the races and classes. So I'm going to see how those all work and then what we can kind of do with them after that. Because then maybe what I can do is after all those guys are in their own little boxes, um, as a different storage solution, there will be, uh, maybe I can then utilize, reuse these for some of these other tokens. Um, and we'll see what those look like. So you guys keep an eye out for that video if you want to see that other different storage solution when I get it. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.